Welcome back to another in our series of great chapters in the Bible. Our chapter today comes from the New Testament book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, by faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found, because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world, and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundation whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them, and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites, and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, 
Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. We have gone over in past devotionals that that of the de definition and how valuable it is to know the meaning of a word. While a definition is good and gives us the raw materials of the word, we get a better feel for the word when it is used in a sentence. Still, there is another way in which that word is cemented in our minds when we see it in action. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, speaks of love. The Greek word is agape. We can read the definition. Affection, benevolence, charity. We see it used in a sentence. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. We believe that we see it clearly. Yet, when Paul shows us in the 13th chapter, we are left with no doubt what it means. For he tells us in that chapter in verses 4 through 7, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude, does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. We come to chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, and the writer, who is unknown to us, delivers the word, the definition, and the examples we need to etch that concept in our minds. He begins in verse 1 of chapter 11, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And again in verse 6, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. Now, we need a visual of what faith looks like. Like Paul, the writer floods us with example after example of what faith looked like in the days of old. He walks us through the Old Testament, beginning in Genesis through Joshua. Creation, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, the Israelites coming out of Egypt, and Rahab the prostitute. Realizing it, he could go on and on, he begins to compact the passage. Verse 32, he tells us, And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson, Jephthah of David and Samuel and the prophets. Time will fail me. What a sentence. What he is telling them and us is that the whole of the Old Testament is filled with these examples of faith so that we are not wanting for a definition. What we have is the quintessential portrait of faith. Those heroes didn't need to stand on a soapbox and preach about faith. They lived it. Their actions defined faith. As the old saying goes, people would rather see a sermon than hear one. But what does he mean in the closing verse of this chapter? Verses 39 and 40. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Apart from us. Apart from us. As wondrous as those listed in this chapter are, we are like them in faith if we press on. We need not feel inferior to them, no matter their stature. They are completed in us, and we in them. 
Peter speaks of the prophets who wrote of the things to come in his letter in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you in the things that have been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. How fortunate we are to be in this day and age looking back on all the rich history of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Still, chapter 11 is incomplete without the first two verses of the next chapter, chapter 12, in which we read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This is not so much speaking of a crowd surrounding us, watching us, so much as it is the testimony of their lives to guide us. Still, we too take our place, walking by faith, side by side, with the likes of these giants of Scripture. You'll have to admit, that's pretty good company, don't you think? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters in the Bible.